What's up guys, in this video, we're gonna go over how to get your Amazon account unsuspended, how to get it reinstated. And I'm joined with David Chung, who is an Amazon bookseller. He's been in business for 16 plus years, right? 16 years. Yeah, and he has sold millions on Amazon, uh, mainly used books. He's been suspended four times and has successfully gotten reinstated each time. He's got some next level tips for you guys. And in this video, we're gonna go over five steps to take in order to get your account back. So welcome to the channel, David. Thanks for having me. 100%. Talk to us. All right. So Amazon suspensions suck. And oftentimes it feels like there's not much you can do uh, to prevent them. Or uh, e even when you're in it, it, it may feel completely helpless. My hope is that, again, by having this roadmap of the five steps, you're able to at least think very logically through the situation and uh, get your account reinstated uh, as quickly as possible. So step number one is setting up protections uh, beforehand. Uh, one of the most common reasons I've heard for people getting suspended is just not realizing that Amazon has requested information from them. Uh, that's happened to us. That's happened to other booksellers that I know. And so uh, the first thing that you want to do right now, if you're watching this video, is uh, pause and Take the email, which is going to be in the notes. It's an email that Amazon sends all of their uh, account verification requests through. And you're going to want to uh, put email automations or alert automations to be able to uh, very visibly see whenever Amazon reaches out to you uh, about uh, getting more information. So that email, again, will be dropped uh, in the notes below. So that's step number one is just setting up uh, protections and safeguards. If you have a team or if you have a VA doing your customer service, make them aware that Amazon or you know the uh, you know the other platforms that you sell on will often or occasionally reach out asking for more information. And so, just making your team aware of it, and then of course, uh, part of step one being uh, setting up protections is also watching this video and just writing down these five steps so that you're uh, that way you're prepared. Step number two is preparing invoices. Uh, the most common uh, documentation that Amazon requests in a suspension consideration it, are invoices. Now, invoices for booksellers are uh, particularly tough just because oftentimes uh, booksellers are cherry picking or they might be buying uh, books by the pallet or bulk uh, or library sales. And so uh, getting invoices is really tough and what I will say is while getting invoices are really challenging, it's even more challenging when you're in a time crunch. Amazon gives you about a week to generate that invoice or produce that invoice. It's going to be very, very challenging uh, to get those invoices you know, several months after the, uh, after the matter uh, within a week. And so this second step is probably the most uh, time intensive and probably the most work, but it's going to be uh, sort of the the key to a successful appeal, which is making sure that you have those invoices prepared ahead of time. Um, we do primarily bulk purchases of books. And so we purchase from, you know, Goodwills and other thrift stores around the country, and we have good relationships with these suppliers. And so one of the things that we do is we get all of our invoices, uh, just bulk invoices uh, sent to us, and then we store it in our uh, file. And we also keep tabs of which ASINs come from which loads. And we, we're able to do that through our uh, inventory listing uh, software. So like Avery, for GoToLister, you're able to track sources, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. And so it would be the same thing. You're able to track sources. And in our source, one of our source, um, I guess, uh, parts of our source is also which load it came mm -hmm. from, not just yeah, the supplier. Yeah. And so uh, once you have those invoices uh, for the bulk side, you're pretty much good. Uh, again, you want to just make sure the invoices have the supplier's name, their address, their email, their phone number, their website, all the key information. It even helps having an account contact that Amazon could reach out to uh, should your account uh, you know, be audited. Uh, but then also make sure that the, um, the business name on the invoice, it matches the uh, Amazon store name, make sure that the address matches, make sure the phone numbers and emails also match, or at least have some sort of connection to it. Um, and then lastly, of course, like in the invoice, it may not always say the ASIN. 
And uh, there are ways to uh, sort of get around that. But once you have the invoice in hand, it becomes infinitely easier to submit appeals. Now, what if you're a cherry picker? It becomes a little bit more challenging, but it's still doable. Uh, when you're cherry picking, they still provide you a receipt. What I would encourage is if you have thrift stores that you normally frequent, start building relationships with their uh, store manager or even maybe their bulk purchasing uh, manager. And what you're able to do is maybe get those uh, receipts and once a week or once a month, depending on how much volume you're buying, uh, build a relationship with them and ask them to reformat the receipt in a proper you know, invoice format that Amazon will accept. And so again, sort of the supplier details that you need and also your buyer details that you need. Um, asking for that is not unreasonable. It's not going to be easy, but you definitely will be able to build a relationship with your suppliers and ask them to reformat the receipt and the material that you're purchasing, the books that you're purchasing, and put it into a format that Amazon actually will accept. Because Amazon will not accept just you know paper receipts without your uh, store name on it, without any details on it. So that's step number two, just making sure that you have invoices prepared ahead of time prior to uh, suspension. Number three, let's say you are suspended, you get suspended preparing the appeal. Uh, there are a couple of tips here where, um, you know, very easy to follow, but also easy to miss. And so when preparing an appeal, you want to make sure that you format in a very specific way. Um, you want it to be very uh, coherent and also very uh, easy to read. Um, so that way, uh, just at a glance, uh, whoever's reviewing your appeal, they're able to get the gist of the appeal. You do not want to submit appeals that are you know, three, four, five pages long. It, those won't be read. And so uh, in preparing the uh, appeals, make it concise, make it professional. Uh, I recommend running uh, you know, the appeal through uh, the appeal or plan of action through um, you know, grammar check, spelling check, make sure everything looks good. Uh, just make sure that your store name is also on the email or I'm sorry, on the bottom of the appeal. Make sure that the appeal is being sent from the email associated with your seller account. And lastly, if you get stuck on the appeal, because again, it's, it's a technical document that you want to write and you want it, it to be fairly persuasive. Um, I did create a custom GPT uh, powered through uh, ChatGPT, uh, OpenAI, that will help you formulate your appeal based on uh, questions and prompts that uh, it asks you. And so uh, that's going to, you know, more details on that in the notes as well. Uh, step number four, there's a good chance that your first, second, third appeal does not go through. Um, I think for this most recent time, we had a total of five appeals. I remember in our last appeal in 2019, uh, September 2019th, I think it was a total of like 10 or 12 appeals. And so there's a very good chance, uh, statistics show, probability shows that there's a very good chance that your first appeal does not get accepted. Uh, not all is lost. Uh, what I would recommend doing is uh, trying to get more information from them for why the appeal was denied and make adjustments to your appeal, whether it's an uh, invoice requirement, maybe uh, they want uh, more of a digital trail uh, with your invoice, or maybe they want more details on how you're going to prevent this from happening again in the future. Uh, make sure you update the appeal and then resubmit it and understand that sometimes it's going to take several times. Uh, side tip that you may not know is after several appeals, it feels like you may not be getting anywhere. There is another option that you can uh, then take which is reaching out or escalating your case to executive seller relations. And so the way that you can do this is by reaching out to a very specific email or there are several emails that will get you to them. And then for this appeal, uh, like escalation of a case, you want to make it very personal, uh, talk about the financial impact to your business. Um, and also, again, this is really pretty much imagine it as like you're getting your elevator pitch in front of uh, someone who actually is able to make uh, decisions at Amazon. And so it, it better be compelling, but it also better be short, uh, get to the point, not you know dragged on with full of uh, spelling mistakes and grammar issues. And so uh, th the way to reach executive seller relations, uh, those emails will be down in the uh, notes as well. 
Step number five, this is the final step. It's kind of a all encompassing step, but also it's a very important step that maybe uh, you have access to. Uh, should you find yourself, um, you know, five appeals in, you reach out to uh, ex executive seller relations and they're unable to help you. Uh, this by far has been the most helpful uh, person in Amazon for me, which is their account health assurance team. So account health assurance is a very special service that Amazon rolled out, I think last year sometime. Uh, that essentially uh, was to counteract uh, a lot of the criticism and heat that they were getting that Amazon doesn't really care about its sellers. And so this is a dedicated team uh, focused on helping you with your account. And that also includes uh, appeals and suspensions as well. And so uh, I, I wanna preface this by saying, uh, this is only eligible for certain sellers, and I'll get to that more in a second. But essentially, Account Health Assurance is a dedicated person uh, who's able to answer very specific questions about your account and even help you in crafting your reappeal, uh, your second, third, fourth, fifth appeal, and tell you exactly what you need to do. A lot of the best tips that I've gotten in sort of like the appeal process has come from uh, the account health assurance representatives that I've spoken to. Now, here's the bad news. Not everyone is eligible. You have to have an account health rating of 250 or more. And uh, I think when you first start off on selling on Amazon, uh, I believe it's below that. And so this is something that uh, will grow with age as your account ages, the account health rating will increase. But uh, secondly, something that you can control is it also depends on your account health metrics. So negative feedback, account issues, all the other like uh, metrics that Amazon cares about has a direct impact on your account health rating. And so just making sure you're on top of that because that fifth, uh, you know, this fifth step, this tool uh, reaching out to account health assurance is so valuable. It's like being able to get someone on the phone who's knowledgeable about your account, knowledgeable about the appeal process, talking to you like, you can't put a dollar amount on that. And so those are my five tips uh, in getting through an account suspension. I've used these five uh, steps uh, in getting through probably the last three of my appeals uh, or suspensions. And, um, you know, I'm still selling. So hope it helps. Yeah, it definitely does. And for people out there, there's probably a lot of people that are still, you know, itching for more information. And I'll just say this about you, David. There's a lot of companies out there like Riverbend, Seller Basics, um, the one I was just talking about, ASTG or whatever, the, the huge Facebook group. And these people are good at getting accounts back, but they're not specialized for booksellers. They don't really understand the whole used book thing. They don't understand that sometimes booksellers get books for free. Sometimes there's not a paper trail. Some, it's difficult sometimes to prove authenticity of a secondhand item. So for people that are interested in learning more about, I'll just say your services. I know you're not 100% set on offering this service, but you have built something uh, that will be, you know, evergreen forever. So if you want to talk a little bit about that and um, what you might offer people. Yeah, absolutely. So after our most recent suspension a, a few months ago, I pretty much made a vow to myself that this would never happen to our account ever again. And uh, I then proceeded to spend the next several weeks uh, to document everything about, um, you know, what went into the appeal and how we got our account back, like step by step. And in addition to that, in the last month, I've had numerous conversations with other booksellers uh, just talking about their experience, getting their timelines of, you know, uh, how long did it take to go from the first email to uh, your account being suspended? Like documenting all of that, putting that that all into an uh, exhaustive guide uh, that uh, I'm making available to everyone now. Awesome. And how can they get that? Um, hopefully we can drop a link. Uh, in the notes below, uh, it's yeah, it'll available be for sale. Below. Yeah, you guys can check it out. So thank you so much, David, for coming on. Thank you. Also, go follow David at Dave Can Read on Instagram. And are you, are you on a, you're on Facebook too, David Chung? He's in the Facebook. Yep, David Chung. Instagram is probably the best place to reach me. Uh, Dave Can Read. And um, you know, I, I'm not super proactive on there, but I will try to get back to uh, messages, especially if you have questions uh, regarding suspensions, uh, try to help you sort of find your path. Awesome. Thanks, David. Thank you.